Hi, my name is Joanna and I'm a PhD student in the Leo Lab at VIB in Belgium. First of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to present uh, to you my PhD work. Uh, so here I will show you our single cell profiling of sleep and wake differences in the fruit fly. So far, the data suggests that different cell types sleep differently. So sleep is an evolutionary conserved state in which an animal rests like in this nighttime recording um, and in which it responds slower to stimuli, but this is reversible. Currently, we either define sleep at the behavioral or the network level. So in this project, we asked whether we can define whether we can find correlates of sleep at a deeper level down to the cellular and molecular levels and answer questions such as whether we can tell apart a sleeping from a waking cell. We approach these questions by profiling flies at different points of the sleep-wake cycle with single cell transcriptomics. Specifically, I selected flies at different sleep and wake conditions, for example, these three conditions here. The time points were either in the early, early, morning, early uh, or late night or early or late day, um, which we indicate in Sidegeber or ZT times. We then pulled all the um, fly brains together in a single suspension to avoid batch effects by applying a multiplexing strategy. The data set consists of more than 106,000 cells depicted in this uh, UMAP as single dots. We have identified 24 distinct clusters with some of the marker genes that I show in this violin plot. For example, we um, can distinguish between the three subtypes of the Kenyan cells, alpha, beta, alpha, beta prime and gamma, which is the homologue region of the cortex. So after defining these 24 clusters, the first thing we wanted to check was um, whether with our data set, we could see the well-characterized clock machinery. And indeed, we find all the major players, timeless period, cry clock and clockwork orange, that are cycling as expected between different ZT times uh, in the clock neurons. So specifically the um, period and timeless have a high expression during the early night compared to the early morning. And the opposite is true for cry and clock. Um, interestingly, we also see the cycling uh, in different uh, glia cell types that I'm uh, depicting here. So now that we are confident in the data set, we went on to do differential expression analysis between sleep and wake conditions. And I'm plotting here all the clusters that have differentially expressed genes above certain thresholds. Out of 89 clusters, 76 have either up or down regulated genes. We found that the cell type that changes its transcriptome the most is um, the ensheathing glia. Um, which are similar to the mammalian microglia. But also the bulk sample ranks quite high in the amount of differentially expressed genes. However, when we compare the distribution of all cell types across the amount of differentially expressed genes and the average log full change, you can appreciate that while the bulk sample has a lot of um, differentially expressed genes, these genes have really low log full changes on average. Um, if we zoom in on the ensheathing glia compared to the bulk sample on a volcano plot with the p-value on the y and the log four change on the x-axis, uh, it indeed, indeed becomes clear that there are much more differentially expressed genes uh, with higher log four change in the ensheathing glia compared to the bulk sample. So this confirms that to identify sleep-wake related genes, we need to look at a homogeneous cell population instead of in the entirety of an heterogeneous brain that averages out all the differences. So, so far, I've shown you differentially expression analysis that we have performed between two groups of conditions, sleeping versus waking cells. But our data set also includes conditions with increasing amount of sleep deprivation, as depicted um, here. Um, which ranges from 20 to 8 to 2 hours of sleep, and then from 2 to 8 to 14 to 20 hours of sleep deprivation. Um, therefore, we have to start to perform a different kind of analysis to detect changes um, with increasing sleep drive. Um, and 
uh, to do this, we have created a template of those conditions and asked how many genes match with an R square of at least 0.8. We have run this analysis for many cell types, uh, and I'm showing you here one particular cell type that we found interesting. The um, ellipsoid body is a, a region in the fly brain um, that can be divided into different ring neurons, uh, which all have very different functions. Um, but we know that our five neurons are important for regulating sleep drive. So in our UMAP, um, already the ring neurons um, are separated into two clusters at least, subclusters. Um, and so I've run the sleep drive analysis on these two clusters separately and found that um, only for one of the subtype, the ring neurons B, there are highly correlating genes, while there are almost none in the, in the other subtype, really suggesting that this subtype is involved in sleep drive or this is not. And here I'm just um, including both positive and negatively correlating genes for the ring B cluster. All these different analyses boil down to my main point, which is that we find different differentially expressed genes depending on what cell population we look at. More specifically, the majority of identified genes in each of the cell types is unique to that cell type. For example, 58 genes of the 110 differentially expressed genes for ensheathing LIA are uniquely differentially expressed in only that cell type. The highest number of overlapping differentially expressed genes between, uh, are between um, astrocyte like LIA and ensheathing LIA. For all the other combinations, the common genes are less than 10 and mostly below 5. We find similar results when we test the accuracy of a model to classify sleeping from waking cells that was trained with a different cell subtype. For example, the three Kenyan cell subtypes. When we train a classifier based on the cells of the gamma subtype, let's say, um, it will be able to quite ac accurately to predict other gamma, ce gamma cells into sleep and wake as well. And in line with the left plot, um, this classifier performs poorly on classifying cells of another subtype. Taking this together, this tells us that different cell populations have a different sleep signature. So with this, I'd like to thank the lab, the three core facilities that I have worked with for this project, our funding sources, and thanks to you for listening. I'm happy to discuss any questions you may have.